In this video, we will explore isolated systolic hypertension (ISH), a condition characterized by high systolic blood pressure in older adults. We will discuss its causes, diagnostic methods, associated risks, treatment options, and important considerations for managing ISH in the elderly population. Isolated systolic hypertension occurs when the large elastic arteries become stiff with age, reducing their elasticity and increasing calcification. This results in increased pressure waves from the heart, leading to elevated systolic blood pressure. Understanding these mechanisms helps in developing treatments for ISH. In order to accurately diagnose isolated systolic hypertension, ISH, ambulatory blood pressure monitoring, ABPM, is recommended as the gold standard. This method provides multiple blood pressure readings and allows for the evaluation of patterns and variability. Office measurements using sphygmomanometry are also commonly used, but may be influenced by external factors. Standardized techniques, proper cuff size, and multiple measurements are important to minimize errors. Home blood pressure monitoring can provide long-term assessment and treatment monitoring. Various risk factors contribute to the development and progression of isolated systolic hypertension. Age is the most significant risk factor, as ISH becomes more prevalent with advancing age. Other factors include male gender, family history of hypertension, obesity or overweight, sedentary lifestyle, excessive salt intake, high alcohol consumption, and certain chronic conditions such as diabetes, dyslipidemia, and chronic kidney disease. ISH also displays racial and ethnic disparities, with higher prevalence rates observed in African American and elderly populations. Understanding these risk factors and their impact on ISH prevalence is vital for early identification, risk stratification, and implementation of appropriate preventive measures. Elevated systolic blood pressure and isolated systolic hypertension can lead to target organ damage, affecting the heart, kidneys, and brain. In the cardiovascular system, sustained high SBP can cause left ventricular hypertrophy, diastolic dysfunction, myocardial ischemia, and heart failure. In the kidneys, increased SBP can induce glomerular damage, leading to proteinuria, progressive chronic kidney disease, and end-stage renal disease. Cerebral complications associated with ISH include microvascular changes, increased risk of stroke, and cognitive impairment. Close monitoring and early intervention are crucial to prevent or minimize target organ damage in ISH patients. Pharmacological management is important for controlling high systolic blood pressure and isolated systolic hypertension. Medications like ACE inhibitors, ARBs, CCBs, and diuretics are commonly used to reduce blood pressure by various mechanisms. Combining different classes of medications may be necessary to achieve target blood pressure goals. Regular monitoring and adjustment of medication dosages are crucial as patients age and develop other health conditions. Lifestyle changes are important in managing isolated systolic hypertension alongside medications. Regular aerobic exercise, following a healthy diet like DASH, weight management, and limiting sodium intake all help lower blood pressure and improve cardiovascular health. In isolated systolic hypertension, hemodynamic changes occur due to increased arterial stiffness and high pulse pressure. These changes include increased cardiac output, reduced arterial compliance, and widened pulse pressure. This knowledge helps clinicians design appropriate treatment strategies for elevated systolic blood pressure. Accurate management of isolated systolic hypertension is facilitated by evidence-based clinical guidelines from reputable cardiology organizations. These guidelines cover multiple aspects such as blood pressure targets, lifestyle changes, medications, special populations, and monitoring strategies, aiming to improve patient outcomes and minimize associated complications. In addition to pharmacological and lifestyle interventions, non-pharmacological approaches have gained recognition in managing isolated systolic hypertension. Complementary therapies such as meditation, relaxation techniques, and yoga have shown promise in reducing blood pressure and inducing a relaxation response. These modalities may act through various mechanisms, including stress reduction, improvement in autonomic function, and enhancement of endothelial function. Although further research is warranted to establish their efficacy and optimal implementation, these non-pharmacological interventions offer alternative options for patients who prefer or respond favorably to such approaches. Isolated systolic hypertension has been implicated as a risk factor for cognitive decline, dementia, and Alzheimer's disease. Elevated systolic blood pressure, especially in midlife, increases the risk of cerebrovascular lesions, white matter hyperintensities, microinfarcts, and cerebral hypoperfusion, among other pathological changes. These factors contribute to vascular cognitive impairment and accelerate cognitive decline. 
the association between isolated systolic hypertension and Alzheimer's disease is multifactorial, involving shared risk factors, vascular contributions to cognitive impairment and dementia, and neurodegenerative processes. Awareness of this association facilitates risk stratification, early intervention, and comprehensive management strategies to improve cognitive outcomes in patients with ISH. Recent research has led to new treatment options for isolated systolic hypertension. Wearable devices and smartphone apps can remotely monitor blood pressure, while non-invasive techniques such as pulse wave velocity measurement are being explored for better diagnosis. Personalized medications and treatment plans based on genetic and molecular characteristics are also being investigated. These advances can improve early detection and achieve better blood pressure control in isolated systolic hypertension. The management of isolated systolic hypertension in older adults is complex. Medication selection must consider comorbidities and polypharmacy. Target blood pressure may differ, and monitoring for electrolytes, renal function, and orthostatic hypotension is essential. Adherence can be a challenge, so simplifying dosing and involving caregivers can help. A multidimensional approach is needed to optimize blood pressure control. Isolated systolic hypertension is a common condition in older individuals that increases the risk of heart problems. Learning about its causes, diagnosis, treatment options, and effects on the body can help doctors give better care and lessen the impact of cardiovascular disease.